Hey guys, this is Echo Saurix with ADSR Toots, and I'm really excited to bring you this first look in features overview of Native Instruments' new reactor ensemble or synthesizer called Contour. It is set to release when Complete 10 launches here on October 1st. And it was designed by St Stefan Schmidt. I hope I'm saying his name right. He's the founder, I believe, of Native Instruments. And so you kind of know when that pioneering brain is behind this synth, it's going to be kind of cool. And I don't want to get too much into a review with this, and I want to keep it more of a features overview. But it is a really cool synthesizer. Um, just as a quick side note, I really liked it, and I'm not the biggest reactor guy. I've, I only typically use Razor. I'm, I don't use a lot of the other ensembles. But I really liked uh, what Contour had to offer. Contour is kind of built up as a really expressive playable synth that's capable of a lot of rich, organic texture sounds, um, a lot of metallic things. And if you go to the uh, Native Instruments website, you'll see all that. And it really is expressive. I will give it that. It is a fun synth to play. And at first, I was a little confused by what was going on under the hood. But as I played around with it for about 30 or 40 minutes, I started to really like what I was seeing when, and especially what I was hearing. So in this video, I'm going to cover basically every little section of the synth and kind of what it's doing. But I'm not going to go into great depth on every little knob, slider, and fader. There will be a total of four video tutorials on Contour this month, and this is the first one, so there'll be three after that. And I will get a little bit more in depth as to what all these little knobs and sliders do and what they actually stand for and mean, but for this video, it'd be too long if I went into absolutely everything. I'm just going to do a general overview of the features. So when you open up Contour, you're going to see the typical uh, AB layout for a reactor ensemble with the two pages and you have this patch browser here. I do want to go play, go through and play some of the patches. I thought that would be pretty cool for people who are interested in checking this thing out. I'm, just, I'm not going to go through nearly everything, and I'm not going to go through as much as you would see on a typical kind of preset surfing um, video, but I will go through some of them. The first category you get is this keys, and the key sounds are pretty cool. It's a good kind of a road type thing. So you can kind of, hear, kind of hear that some of the sounds are, they have that really uh, crispy, good, dry sound that FM synthesis has. Well, Contour is a phase modulation synth, essentially, and it is, that, that's a close type of synthesis to uh, FM synthesis. A lot of... Um, a lot of synths back in the day in the 80s that actually say that they're FM synths, but they're really uh, phase modulation. So our ears kind of got used to hearing and interchanging those two words as this, as this kind of sound. And that's the first thing I noticed. It kind of has an FM8 vibe going. But yeah, it does keys really, really well. So Deep House producers and things like that, you'll love it. It, does, it has some really cool organ, kind of organ pads in there. The plucks were really cool too. This harp is pretty neat. Some of the... It, it does the metallic sounds really well. So you can kind of hear it. It definitely has that cool FM8 vibe going on. But there's, to my ear, it's a little richer than FM8 is. So you can hear it does those sounds really well. I'm not going to go through the metallic or the winds. There are some cool wind sounds. The first category of uh, presets or snap snapshots, as they're called, in Reactor that really caught my attention with Contour was the bass patches. <laughs> I mean, that's a really cool uh, Moog emulation. So let me take this down to 36 here so it's more of a consistent sound. So you can hear that the bass, some good modulation there going on. The bass, the bass has some great low end.
I mean, you can't see my face right now, obviously, but I'm, I'm making the ugly face as I play that. That'd be great for dubstep, throw on some wow filter, things like that. And I'm playing this live, so I'm sorry it's not the coolest uh, progressions, but I just have a keyboard to my side here that I'm kind of playing these through. That's a really cool sound. be a good offbeat bass for Melbourne. So you can really hear the basses. The basses were, surprised me. I, I wasn't expecting that from this synth going into it. Now the leads, they surprised me as well too. Some really thick, rich sounds. So that's the type of an FM sound that I would expect to hear from it, kind of the, the really rich sonically, with a lot of really rich sonic content. The brasses are pretty cool too. Here's an interesting one. It's called CPU Hog, but I didn't notice this one taking up more CPU than most of the other presets. They bob around 16 to 18%, and I'm running a uh, quad core i7 new iMac. I think in Logic it, it hyperthreads to 8 core. This was a really cool patch that I was kind of blown away by. I was trying to play right there with different velocities. This is a really velocity sensitive synth, which is awesome. So it's really playable. So it's capable of doing kind of those typical phase modulation sounds, but it's also really capable of doing kind of those thick trance super saw sounds. So that's some really cool leads. The presets are definitely diverse, and the pads, the pads I expected to be cool because that's kind of what they build as being a powerhouse for ambient type of evolving sounds. So I mean, some of the pads are just, just awesome. So yeah, the pads are thick, rich, nice blend of sonic content in those. I'm not going to go through the soundscapes or the FXX because I don't want to turn this into a, a complete preset, preset surfing uh, video, but there's a really, really quick run through of some of the different categories in the snapshots. And like I said, I was, I was really surprised by the bases, uh, the leads, the pads, judging by what I read on the site, I knew they were going to be solid. But yeah, the bases and leads... Are, were a very, very pleasant surprise. So let's start to talk about what you see here when you open up Contour. Now in Contour, you see, first thing you see is this top little grayish white section. This is the uh, macro controls. You have four of them. And when I first opened it, I was like, oh, that's weird. You only get four uh, macros. Well, these macros are actually very deep. These are just kind of all-encompassing knobs that are controlling a host of parameters within Contour. And that actually makes sound design really easy and simple with Contour because when you click on this, for instance, if you see all these little green things pop up, these are all the controls that this drama knob is tied to. And if I do that with color, here is all for color one, here are all of the parameters and or destinations that color one will affect. And same with color two, you'll see, you'll see the blues coming up here. And loudness, same thing. So what that does is it, it still gives you an immense amount of freedom because you think for each of these these four macros, you have upwards, I think some of them are 11, some of them are 12. I haven't gone through and actually counted. I think this is 11. I think color has 12, I want to say, and I think color two has 12 as well. But don't quote me on that. But uh, it, what it does for sound design is it keeps things really focused, which is cool because 
either in my experience with synths, like massive, for instance, it's almost too much freedom at times where you just have ultimate freedom to modulate and macro to your heart's content. And sometimes you get lost doing and adding uh, modulation destinations, which you don't really need to. And then you have synths like uh, Silent, where I wish I had a couple more options and a little bit more flexibility. I think Contour, this is going to be a really cool middle ground between the two where you'll be able to kind of think about, okay, I want more movement in this sound or I, I need to change the color. And you can quickly go to these big macro knobs, which are kind of becoming popular in DAWs and other synths and things like that. Like I noticed Logic X has these like all encompassing four or five knobs to control a whole synth. So that was kind of cool and fresh, I thought. But these four macros are called drama, color one, color two, and loudness. The drama knob here, and when you hit play, you'll see these things dancing around. It's actually what's moving behind the behind the scenes, which I'll get to in a second. And you'll see that these different parameters are all bouncing around up and down. So if I go to, if I click on the A page here, and then select drama, here is the scene that you have going on with the, it just looks like a sine waveform. And you have these different, um, you have these different presets you can choose, but basically different waves. So here's a pulse. And this will affect what's causing the drama in the sound. All right, so looking at some of these different controls inside of this part A, this page A for contour, the first thing you'll notice is you have this button here, which will illuminate. That's how you toggle back and forth between the four. And this, this down here, you have play and record. Well, play is going to turn on this moving sequence. And you have two options on how that moves. You can have it set to a rate, which is like this, you know, zero is gonna move slow. This is move it backwards. So you can actually do reverse sounds, which is awesome. Uh, but, or you can hit sync. And you'll notice when I, when I start playing, there's nothing happening. Your DAW has to be scrolling for the, the little scene here and the sequence to actually move when you set it to sync. But that, that's helpful because then you can set to actually rhythmic note values, uh, which is awesome for production pads and film score and stuff like that. So then next, I'm going to look at the second way that you can actually use some of these different options inside of the macro controls. If you go back to part the part, page B, what you can do is you can actually right click on any of the on any of these macros and hit MIDI or an OS Learn, and then you can use this as a way. See how these are now moving the controls that are illuminated green, they're moving up and down. Well, it's the same that's kind of going on right now when you hit play and you have a scene loaded up. But you can actually have your mod wheel doing that or you can just automate it inside your DAW. So those are the two ways you can get the macro controls to affect the sound. Now going back to here, now going back to page A here, you have a really cool, this little button right here is record. So right now, see how it's just moving on what's happening uh, what was happening in this scene. It's just a really slow moving sine wave. So I'm going to speed it up. And now I'm going to grab my mod wheel over here. And I'm going to, when I, it gets kind of to the middle of this, I'm just going to crank it up and down a bunch. All right. So now we have this weird shape. So you can actually kind of record real time changes to it. So if I hit play. There's what I just recorded with my mod wheel in real time. So that's that's another way you can kind of basically draw in waveforms with your mod wheel if you don't want to use these offset values to kind of control what's happening with them. Uh, let's turn these steps on. Now you can actually have kind of a gated. Kind of can produce a little bit of a gated feel. It's more stuttery. So let me load up like a pulse wave that has the steps on. And then you have the smooth and swing. So what you'll see when you hit the smooth, it kind of smooths out the, the peaks and valleys of it where it's not straight line. So especially with like a pulse waveform or a triangle, kind of smooth things out. Now it's going to be really helpful and awesome for your more evolving sounds where you don't want as sharp of a decay and a rise in the attack. What 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 that in the inverse of that would be if you're doing like the really aggressive dubstep dubstep type basses, I could see myself keeping smooth off all the time. And then the swing, this kind of extends things. Uh, it obviously is going to add swing if you're on the synced rate and everything like that. But that's really cool. 
So there, and you can copy and paste, and you have these different, like I said, these different presets with tons of different parameters. So that is the drama, uh, a little overview of the drama knob. And again, it's used literally just to create drama in your sound. It's going to affect the movement and things that will add more tension and release to your sounds inside a contour. So moving on to the second macro knob that you have here, I'm going to start talking about this color one. Now, all the parameters you see in part A or page A is going to be the same for all four of these macros. That's not going to change at all. Um, but what will change is what's actually going on in the synth with what's being affected. So going back to page B on the synth and you hit this little play, I'm sorry, if you hit this plus, do you see all these different destinations turn purple? Well, these are all the things that the color one macro can potentially affect. So right now you'll see that it's not affecting the, the, these three knobs at all. I'm just going to use these as an example. What you do is you go over here and you click and then drag out, kind of like you do in Massive, and you have that shape that's really, it started with the Massive uh, modulation. Well, now the color is going to affect the uh, fa the phase modulation for the, the self-phase modulation for oscillator A, and the drive for the sine shaper, and we'll get into those in a minute. But that's how you can actually turn on and off different points and different destinations with these macros. So if I go to the drama and hit plus, let's say I don't want that one affected. Well, now I can turn it down and you can see at the top right hand corner of my screen right here, it gives you the percent that's being affected or changed. So that's how you can actually key in the differences within the sound. Basically, once you learn and mess around with the four macros here, you'll, this, this starts to make sense pretty easily and quickly. Um, you just have to go over what each one of these do. And I think the drama one has 11 destinations to it. And I believe the color one has, I want to say 12. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I didn't commit that to memory. Uh, it looks like it has around 10 or 12 and same with the color two. And then the loudness doesn't have as many, I would say has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So about 11. So I'd say each of them have around 11 and the, the colors are going to be affecting things that will really change the timbre of the sound. And that's one thing, I guess that's a good segue into the next topic here, would be, I noticed that with contour, the, the subtle changes, subtle tweaks in like knob, in values of knobs and sliders will, can create a huge difference in the sound. So it's not like a lot of, a lot of soft synths where you kind of have to coerce them to sound a certain way. It's, it's really easy to change like a bass into a pad in a matter of minutes. And that plays into the system with the modulation and macros, you don't have to crank these out all the way to get some really noticeable changes to your sound. So let's talk about the middle section here in contour, kind of the brains of the synth, if you will. So you'll see here in this, this middle section, you have this os shaper in A, os shaper in B. Well, what these represent is this is oscillator A, shaper A, oscillator B, shaper B. The oscillators in contour are being, they're generating sine waves and the shapers, they're also sine shapers. Basically, it's a, it's a type of distortion. It's a wave shape, wave shaping distortion that's using a sinal curve to fold back and create the distortion. Now, you'll see here you'll, you have this pitch box, and this is where you have your different pitches, and they work off of semitone values. And so it's, it's kind of cool because you, you got that FM slash phase modulation sound, but you're not using ratios and operators. You're using oscillators. So if you want to tune things to octave values, uh, 66, uh, I'm sorry, 60 is a value, 48, down to 36, down to 24, down to 12, and so on. So a lot of, this, a lot of the presets you bring up, there'll be 60 involved, and that's why it's kind of in the middle. It's not too high, not too low. And what you'll see here in, if you move over to the right, you're going to see, you're going to see the two filters. Contour has two different filters, and they're very, very different. Uh, the first one is this comb filter, and this is a kind of sounds like an all pass filter, I guess, and it has it can have a lot of resonance in it. And then you have this state variable filter, and this is a really flexible filter, and it's they, they say it's a multi mode um, filter because you have you have this little section right here, which will change kind of the mode of the filter as it goes along. All right, so let's discuss these envelope this envelope section here. Contour comes with three envelopes. You have envelope A, you have envelope P, and you have envelope B. And you'll notice that it has this little plus. So again, anytime you see a plus in contour, these are things that can be modulated, which is pretty cool. So you have those, those little options for the envelopes. Well, 
envelope A and envelope B, they are tied to oscillator A, shaper A, and oscillator B and shaper B. So this first envelope here is controlling the this oscillator and this shaper, and this envelope is controlling this oscillator and this shaper. Now this third envelope is independent from the first two, and I'll touch on that in a second more of what it does. So these are some of the craziest envelopes I've ever seen in a synth. I've heard of ADSR, obviously, um, uh, the attack, decay, sustain, release. I've heard of ADSHR, it has the hold in there. I've even heard of ADDSR, attack, delay, decay, sustain, release, I've heard all those. But I haven't really seen too many that is technically ADBDSR. And what that stands for is attack, decay, one, break point or bend point, D2, sustain, and release. And that's really cool. So you have attack. We all should know what attack is if you've ever used a synth before. Uh, th this first decay point. So you can see how this little notch can really, really smooth out right there. So you can get some really subtle variances in sounds that can really help, um, especially if you have a longer attack time. But So that is your first decay. And then you have the second decay which is happening in this section here, and that happens after this, this bend or break point. So if you crank that down all the way, you'll see that this sound kind of tails out in a linear fashion and then just plummets down. Well, no matter what you do to the K2 and the sustain and jack it up, it still is down really far. But if you print, turn that break point up, it goes back up. Well, the cool thing is, is that the sound's going through your attack phase into the decay going down, and then you can actually have it kind of go back up a little which I thought was really cool. Um, just a little subtle variance that you don't really see in too many synths, or at least I haven't, which I really liked. And again, these are controlling uh, the oscillators A and B and the shaper A and B. Now we get this, this little... Um now we get the little, this, this envelope P here. And the envelope P is a dedicated, dedicated modulation of the oscillator pitches and filter frequencies. So and it has its own macro modulation destinations as well. So we can take this and spread it out here. So you can hear, I'm, I'm gonna use the pitch as an example. That's not affecting my A, D, B, D, 2, S, R, uh, the, the attack, the decay, the sustain, all that with the envelopes. It's just adding to these pitch values in the cutoff. So that's really helpful for if you're trying to really drive a sound and you want to kind of use some attack and the decay and release control over it. Kind of like Silent has the modulation envelopes, but you're only controlling parameters that don't, uh, th these parameters don't affect the normal attack, decay, and sustain release of your sound. So that's really, really cool and really unique. Now I'm going to go on to the mix output here. Actually, I'll go down to the effects first. Um, you have some really unique effects in Contour. The first one is this cabinet. I'm going to change sounds here. I'm going to go to a bass. I'm going to go back to that Electrovirus. So you have this cabinet here. And this is basically just a really advanced distortion module. You have drive, level, tilt, high cut, and mix. Drive is pretty self-explanatory. It is the amount of drive and the amount of the actual grit that you're going to get. And the mix is the amount of the effect that you are going to hear. And it might not seem like it's that going to have that many different types of sounds and effects because it is only four knobs and one slider. But this tilt, this tilt knob changes the timbre of the distortion. So right now it's kind of bit crushy. Now it's like fold back distortion. So you can actually get, and then the high cut really helps too, depending on how much of a bass type of tone you want with the distortion. So it's pretty simple and straightforward, but has a wide range of effects, which I always like with any effect section in a synth. Now next is this gap filter. So this gap filter is pretty cool. It's kind of a weird but interesting uh, effect. So you get these four knobs. You get center, gap, stereo, balance, and then the slider mix. And basically, the best I can understand and probably explain it is that it's four four-pole filters. 
each with a stereo channel. And there's four low pass filters and there's four high pass. So if I turn this up and I turn it to the right, you can hear the sound is kind of spreading out towards, it's spreading out. Like right there, now there's not as much, but it's not a pan, it's, it's cutting out those frequencies left and right, which is kind of cool. So. So it's not gonna obviously pan your whole sound or really affect too much in the stereo spectrum. What it will do is it can carve out certain frequencies depending on what you're taking out of the center in the gap, if you're doing low pass or high pass. And that's really good. That's gonna be that's gonna be coming handy when you're kind of shaping basses and leads and and you want to have a lot of filter cutoff up. So that is kind of what's going on with the gap filter. And I'll spend one of the, on one of the videos, I'll spend a whole tutorial um, run through, kind of going through the effects here. The next, what we have is a pretty standard effect. We have the flanger. It kind of, this is a pretty, it creates kind of a whooshy sound. But you have all the typical things you'd have. You have depth, rate, time, feedback, and mix. And echo is the delay. So you get a time, and the time is displayed in a value from, it looks like zero all the way up to 0.333. So it's not really a, um, uh, then you have milliseconds there too as well more of quicker delays and slap backs and then you can actually have readouts uh, based on your tempo of your song at the millisecond values. And feedback of course is going to determine how many delay, how long you hear the delay decay going for. And stereo is going to spread the stereo field of just the wet. I don't know if you can hear that on YouTube but it spread those out. And then you have a high cut and low cut. And finally what you have here is you have this reverb. And the reverb is pretty cool. It's not super digital sounding, which I liked. You have size, high cut, coarse, and then low cut. So it's pretty pretty versatile re reverb. And finally, what we're going to touch on is this mix, shaper, and feedback section over here. And with that, that'll pretty much round out this features overview in Contour. So the mix here, you have these four options. You have A, B, C, and S. And this is going to determine which of the four different signals of the synthesizer is going to be contributing to the overall sound or the volume of the overall sound. So A is oscillator A and shaper A. And that's basically turning up by a percent. And then you can also turn it down so you can turn it off if you wanted. B right here is for oscillator B and shaper B. And then C is the comb filter. And S is the state filter. So you have an independent amount of how much you can turn up the filters, which is a unique take on the kind of the mix output of a synth. And then moving down, you have this shaper control, and the output mixer is connected to us to a sign shaper here of the same type that's used in these oscillators. So you can really saturate and really, really crush the sound using this. And finally, last, the last little section of the synth we have is a feedback. There's a feedback bus always on. It's kind of like a feedback loop or a feedback bus in Contour. And this is going to determine how much of the comb filter or uh, the state variable filter is going to be running through that feedback loop. So you can also send the effects to it. as well as the reverb, which kind of it's kind of cool because when you have the gap filter and cabinet going, that's a cool way to kind of beef up the sound even more. All right, and that pretty much rounds out all of the general ideas of Contour, uh, just kind of what how it's laid out and what's really in pretty simple terms what's going on with different sections and different knobs of the synth. 
I hope you guys like this overview and feature tutorial. And like I said, there'll be three other contour related tutorials posted on the ADSR network this month. This month. So if you're interested in those, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.